Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. You may remember recently, the good folk at Goblin King Games sent me some of the miniatures from their game Moonstone to showcase on the channel. The main reason for that was because they were gearing up for a Kickstarter campaign for a new expansion book for this game. And as I am talking, that Kickstarter is currently running and in fact has already funded. But after putting these miniatures together and painting them for that video, it's fair to say I fell in love with these miniatures. I think they are absolutely beautiful. And so I decided to raid the coffers, delve into my own money and purchase some additional miniatures with the intention of starting to play this game. And you may remember in my previous video I said that I had looked at playing this game before, but because it has an interesting combat mechanism using cards rather than dice, I had ruled it out because it was going to be a game that was difficult to play solo. Despite that, I am determined to get this game to the table. I think my daughter is very interested in playing it with me, but one way or another I will find opponents because I want to play this game. At this point, what I have done is I have purchased a second box of three miniatures. I picked up some more goblins, which I will show you in a moment, and I picked up a deck of cards that you need to play this game. All of those cards are available to download for free, but I really wanted the proper cards. Furthermore, as it is my birthday in the next few weeks, I managed to convince my wife to purchase the full rulebook for me. Again, the rules are available for free online, but I wanted the flashy hardback book with all of the narrative fiction and the beautiful artwork. I can't show you that book in this video because as I said, it is a gift, but I will show it when it is in my possession. But for now, I'm going to show you the miniatures I purchased and the deck of cards. And just to confirm, I did purchase this myself. This is not a sponsored video. However, Goblin King Games did actually include an additional bonus item with my order, which happened after I had already confirmed my order. I mentioned that solely for transparency purposes, and I will show you that additional product in a separate video. Now, I know you really want to see the miniatures. I know I'm really excited to show them to you. But first, I wanted to briefly talk about the cards. This single box of cards includes all of the different types of cards you will need to play the game. And really, this is so interesting, I wanted to briefly run through all the different cards you get to show you what it's all about. First of all, you get one reference card, double-sided, which includes the player turn and all of the different actions that you can do on your turn. And then you get six events. These are optional, but if all of the players agree to use them at the start of the game, everybody will get one event that you can use when the card dictates to give you a little bit of an edge. Similarly, there are six agenda cards, and if players decide to use those, every player will get one. Unlike the events, which are single use, the agendas are in play for the whole game, providing a persistent benefit to your force. So far, so ordinary, but now it gets interesting because you get a set of arcane cards. They have an arcane logo on the reverse there, and there are three suits, and each suit which are in green, blue, and pink, have a catastrophe card. And I just want to show you this catastrophe art. Look, we have an evil grinning goblin, or is it a probably sad goblin? I don't know. Who really knows what goes on in the mind of a goblin? But each suit has a catastrophe card, and then you get cards that have ones on. You get three of those. You get cards that have twos on. You get two of those, and you get a card with a three on in each of the suits. And you will use these arcane cards to perform arcane abilities. For example, let's look at Swiggity Swooty's card. Little bit of a spoiler for what's coming up later in the video. You can see down here that he has two different special abilities that are arcane abilities. He has the shoot pistol ability and he has the plunder ability. Let's look at the shoot pistol action. We can see there is a green card with an X in it. That means we need to play a green card with a value of anything to activate this ability. And when it kicks off, it will target a particular model on the board and will do X plus one impact damage, where X is the value of the card we have played. And the way it works is when you want to perform that ability, you will draw a number of arcane cards and your opponent will draw a number of arcane cards. 
and you will look at the cards you have drawn. Let's say, for example, we've ended up with these cards in our hand. We know we need to play a green card with any value. And of course, we really want to play a green card with the highest value possible. We are in luck. We have a green three here. So we can pick any card we want from our hand. It doesn't have to be a green card. And we will play it face down. And we will tell our opponent what we have played. Our opponent will also have a hand of cards and they will look through their cards and they will either accept the fact that we have played honestly and the card is the card we have said it is or they can say we are bluffing. We then reveal the card and if indeed we were bluffing they get to replace the card we played with a card from their hand and that can have some seriously nasty repercussions. This is particularly true if your opponent has a catastrophe card in their hand because they can play that catastrophe and then you will have to refer to your ability and it will say here catastrophe this character suffers three wounds so your pistol blows up in your hand it's a catastrophe you take damage rather than your target and so what you have here is a nice little bluffing element you can choose to say whatever you want is on your card but if you're lying and your opponent knows you're lying for example if we have said we've played a green three here and this is our opponent's hand, they have the green three and they know there is only one green three in the deck. They know you're lying. So they can call your bluff and then they can make bad things happen to you. And that's how your special abilities and magical abilities will work in this game. Each time you need to perform one of those actions, you will draw cards, your opponent will draw cards. You will make your selection. Your opponent will either call your bluff or let you roll with the selection you've made. And then you apply the results based on what it says on your character card. It's very neat. And one of those things that as you get to know your opponent better, it becomes more interesting. The more you know the mindset of your opponent, the more you know, is this someone who likes to bluff? Is this someone who likes to play straight? It starts to build layers into the gameplay. And yet this isn't the most interesting card element to the game because Melee also uses cards, but it uses another set of cards. When two characters are engaged in Melee, they will draw cards from the Melee deck. And there are three cards of each type in the deck. There are High Guards, there are Falling Swings, Thrusts, Sweeping Cuts, Rising Attacks and low guards and the way it works is you will pick a card your opponent will pick a card and you will reveal them and you compare them for example if we selected to play sweeping cut which does slicing damage and our opponent has played high guard we can see here that we actually deal no damage but we do not suffer any damage either but it's actually much more interesting than that there are additional layers of rules that add to the complexity of melee and make it quite a thinky part of the game and something that I think is going to take a little while for people to get to grips with because it also requires a certain knowledge of the combatants involved in the melee. There are numerous characters that will gain benefits from making certain types of attack. For example, here's the card for El Capitano and we can see he has the Cutlass that says if this model deals slicing melee damage, increase the damage dealt by plus one. So if we were fighting El Capitano, we might think to ourselves, well, there is an increased chance of him playing Sweeping Cut because Sweeping Cut does slicing damage and therefore he is more likely to play that card to hit us harder than he might otherwise be able to do. And then with that knowledge in mind, we can play the card that will best defend against that type of attack. But it gets more complicated than that because also we can see at the bottom of the card, every character has a signature move. That means if they play the listed card, they can flip over their character card and replace their attack with a special attack that is unique to them. In this case, El Capitan will play the Jolly Roger, which is an upgraded version of Rising Attack. So maybe he will play a Sweeping Cut to get the slicing damage. Maybe he's going to play Rising Attack so he can get his signature move. And it doesn't end there because furthermore, you can see that some of the actions on the cards are highlighted in yellow. 
And if you use a highlighted ability, you can do a follow-up attack, which means you can play a second card from your hand to try and do additional damage. It's layers on layers on layers of things you need to know, things you need to get to grips with, you need to have a good understanding of the best cards for your character, but also the best cards for your opponent's character, but also the best cards to use in conjunction with each other from the hand you've been dealt for that particular melee round. And then also there are things to consider like the ranges of the attacks. Certain characters have to be closer than others and certain attacks won't do damage outside of a particular range. It really involves a deep understanding of positional play, card play, character skills, reading the current situation, reading your opponent, trying to figure out whether they've got the cards in their hand that they really need. Do they have a good poker face or are they just winging it and hoping for the best? At first blush, it looks like a very simple system, but it is one of those systems that is incredibly rich and you will get more out of it the more you put into it. The more you understand the characters on the field and how the cards work, the better able you will be to out position, out maneuver and best your opponent. But that is enough about that. Let's look at some miniatures. Obviously, I bought more goblins. I have decided I want all of the goblins from this range and my absolute priority was to pick up Booty's Bilge. Why was that? Because if there is one thing better than undead pirates, it's goblin pirates. And if there's one thing better than goblin pirates, it's goblin pirates in wheelbarrows or goblin pirates riding on giant lobsters. This last weekend, Games Workshop released a new warband for Underworlds and it included a crab. When I saw that crab, I said at the time, I want to buy that crab and I want to put a goblin on it. I subsequently realized that Moonstone has a goblin riding on a giant lobster. And all my dreams came true. I have to say, this set of goblin miniatures is probably the most inventive and interesting and funny set of miniatures I have seen in an incredibly long time. I will show you what I mean. First of all, we have Swiggerty Swooty, who comes on two frames. And if I bring him a little closer to the camera, you can see he's wearing a squid. The squid is sat over his head. The squid is also armed. I would say armed to the teeth, but I should probably say armed to the beak. Um, he has extra knives, swords, guns, he is fully equipped and you cannot even see the goblin's actual eyes. Those are the eyes of the squid. And that's really funny. And Swiggity Swooty is carrying a chest of loot around with him. He is, after all, a goblin pirate. Here's the other frame. You can see the other tentacles here with the axe and the little shiv. And you can see there's quite a lot of uh, fluff on these. This will just brush off really easily. You can use a toothbrush to get most of it off and then just lightly run a knife over it and that will all come off. I should point out that I ordered these a little while ago and I had to wait quite a while because the Booties Bilge set was out of stock and Goblin King Games were waiting for new stock to come in from a new supplier. So this is the first batch, I believe, of miniatures from their new supplier and this represents the quality of their miniatures going forwards. So if you are ordering anything from their Kickstarter, I believe everything now is coming from that new supplier and this is the quality you can expect. But yeah, a little bit fluffy, a little bit of cleanup required, but that is very easy cleanup to deal with. That will just come off. Next up, we have El Capitano. He is also on two frames. The first frame has his body and his head. Again, you can see there's some of that resin fluff, which will just scrape off. And look at how fantastic this miniature looks. Look at that big old hat. That is a fine hat. That is a hat fit for any goblin pirate. And he's got his little cutlass. He's standing with one foot up on the side of the boat. Because of course, he has a boat. I say boat, I mean wheelbarrow. 
a wheelbarrow with a sail stuck in the back of it, and some loot in the bottom. And what I like about these miniatures is you can see there are little recesses marked out. Those are keyed out areas where the miniature will stand, so you know exactly how to build these miniatures without the need for any instructions. You just position them where it is quite evident that they should go. Look at that, how cute is that? A wheelbarrow boat. But of course, the star of the show is Krusty Balboa. We have a goblin who stands astride the mighty lobster. He's got his telescope out. He is scoping the lay of the land. And then we have the main body of Krusty. Beautifully detailed. Really, really nice. And this miniature comes in a lot more parts than the rest, as you would expect. There is a separate part for his feelers, which just um, will go in here, making him look like he has a very sophisticated moustache. And then we have a second frame with his cute little legs and then his arms. He's got his one big lobster claw and on his other arm he has a hook. Of course he does. Really, really lovely stuff. And of course, finally, in the box, you get your three character cards. These character cards, it's a good idea to sleeve them because they have the health bar tracks at the bottom. And if you've got them sleeved in clear sleeves, you can just mark those health points off with a pen. And as I showed earlier, the reverse has a special signature move for each of them. And that's it. That's your lot. That's Booty's Bilge a set of three really lovely miniatures and I cannot wait to get them put together and painted. In fact, let's get them put together now. And by the power of a jump cut, here I am just a short while later at my paint station and we have our miniatures assembled. First up here is Swiggity Swooty. He loves the booty. This miniature cleaned up nice and easily, as I mentioned before, uh, a toothbrush got most of the fluff off and then it was just a matter of a little bit of scraping with a craft knife or a mold line remover for any visible lines but there wasn't really a lot to do and he went together really really nicely there is just a small gap up here where one of the tentacles fitted in but other than that absolutely fine I did have to heat the sword to straighten it out a little bit. Use some hot water on that. But other than that, very nice. And he looks fantastic. There is a lot going on with this miniature. We have a lot of tentacles and they're all sort of over the top of each other, which makes it a little bit more difficult to paint. And some people might want to try and paint this in subsection assemblies, but I tend to throw things together more often than not and paint them all in one piece. If there are bits of the miniature that you can't see to paint, then you won't see it not painted. Next up is the glorious El Capitano in his wheelbarrow boat. What a lovely miniature this is. Went together really nicely. Again, very easy to clean up. And again, some people may want to paint this in sub-assemblies, keep the goblin separate from the boat, but I'm a renegade. I'm going to do it all in one go. I haven't attached him to a base yet because if I do attach him to a base, I might have problems uh, decorating that base later on. So I'm probably going to paint him off of the base and then just stick him on the base at the very end. But what a really great miniature this is. So much character. Can't wait to get him painted up but not really looking forward to doing a little bit of freehand on the boat name. And without a doubt, the showstopper, the main attraction, we have Krusty Balboa, the giant lobster, with his little goblin companion. What a fantastic miniature. Look at the character, look at the detail. I absolutely love it. This had the most parts in terms of putting it together, but still went together very, very easily. Not really a lot of gaps or anything to fill. 
which is always really nice. It's nice when you can just stick a miniature together and it pretty much fits together perfectly. So you can just get straight to priming and painting. And look, he really wants a fight. Absolutely wonderful. As with the other pieces, some people may want to paint this in subsections, keep the goblin off the back maybe. But I like to get things put together, see how it's all going to work out. I do paint in subsections sometimes where there's just no other choice. But for these, I will work around it. And that's it. That is our three goblin pirates. What an amazing selection of miniatures. So much character, so much detail, so funny, so much imagination. Wonderful stuff. It is as I expected from my previous experience with Goblin King Games miniatures. Excellent work. The next thing to do, of course, is get some paint on these miniatures. I'm not going to be doing that in this video. I will do a follow-up video where I show them painted off, just so you can see the final thing. But for now, that is it from me. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.